to Simpler. We are three pastors, husbands, and fathers on a journey to make life simpler by holding Jesus as the core for every belief and practice. This journey has shaped us to be more like Christ, freed us from the shame of failure, and encouraged us to a deeper love of our Lord and God. We invite you to join us in the discussions that have shaped and continue to shape our lives. I felt like such a good opportunity, opportunity to be like, what's going on, man? Like, wait like a yeah. Yeah. So you want to, do you feel like you should believe in Jesus? Why would you even ask that question? If you feel like there is enough evidence against the existence of God, why would you even bring this up? Because he was even, because uh, my first thought, if someone were to bring that up is, okay, well, their parents are probably Christian or they feel like they need to fit into this mold. But he was like, man, I grew up in an atheistic home. I was like, I have nothing in my life that has ever pointed to Jesus. And this is where he is. So I was like, well, it's such a great it seems like something's working in your life. Just, well, and he's asking legitimate questions. Yes. Yeah. Well, I hate that those, we miss those opportunities. Like, yeah. I think what a lot of Christians miss in that conversation, I know we're derailing a little bit from where we're going, but is that um, the faith, for example, that Abraham put in God as a provider of salvation in Romans 4 that was credited him as righteousness mm -hmm. had nothing to do with Abraham's like evidential belief of God existing. In fact, everything God told him that was going to happen was contrary to what Abraham knew to be true. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're going to have a baby at your old age, which is physically impossible. Yeah. So it wasn't, I think Christians missed that point. They're trying to prove to atheists that God exists yeah, you mm -hmm. can't do that. rather than just saying, this is the message God has given us that if we yeah. put our faith in his provision of salvation, that's Jesus, we get to yeah. have life forever with him. Yeah. Like, and then let the spirit do what the spirit does. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that, if if First Corinthians one, it, I was about to say if First Corinthians one is correct, uh, <laughs> I'll say it differently. If our understanding of First Corinthians one is correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. that the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God, and we as Christians are trying to argue with atheists based on the wisdom of this world to bring them to God, mm -hmm. that's a futile effort. Yeah. It's a foolish conversation. Yeah, yeah. and, and so First Corinthians, yeah, it's foolishness. And yeah. so what you do is you offer them the foolishness of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And people are like, yeah, but that doesn't make any sense to them. You're like, right. You know, but you offer them the foolishness of the gospel and trust what he says doesn't in chapter make any one and chapter two, that the spirit will do this. Right. Like, this yeah. is what the spirit does. Yeah, it absolutely. doesn't make any sense in general. Right. right. We yeah. were sinful, basically flipping God the dirty bird. So we want to have nothing to do with you and then get, for whatever reason, God still loved us and showed us right. grace. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. No. Now, there's nothing about the gospel that makes sense from the perspective of yeah, the world. The, this yeah. will be, we need to do this sometime. Let's have a podcast where we talk about the biblical framework, biblical economy, and how everything is flipped on its head. Mm, the first or idea. last, right? This kind of yeah, thing, yeah. you know, that if you want to be the greatest, you need to be the servant. So let's, let's add that to our list of okay. the, Sounds good. The, the upside down kingdom. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we're not talking about the upside down kingdom today. What? So struggling. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, really hard. Um, so, and I'm an uh, expert at this. You are, man. Every week now for over two years, man. And every day, <laughs> and that went straight every day. <laughs> every day. You since, mean you don't say one Dr. Pepper? A every week. day since 1999, that has happened at least once, and. I, I don't yeah. know why I still struggle with this sometimes. <laughs> Seriously, you don't think you've ever had a day where you've had no Dr. Peppers? Actually, that's not true because I, it was like six months in college when I quit drinking Dr. Pepper for a little while. Okay, so aside from six months, since 1999, there has been you've a day, probably had a Dr. Pepper, let's, let's yes. say six days out of seven. Oh, no, no, no. Probably, like, if you count up those days, you could probably take five that I didn't. Wow, golly. <laughs> Probably. Why is Dr. Pepper not our sponsor yet? I know, right? <laughs> the only reason that those days exist is because I was in a situation where there was it wasn't available and I yeah, had to yeah. have some other form of caffeine. So will I be moving to coffee soon? Probably. Yeah. I just but don't can want, you? From the, I don't want, the, I don't habit, want, the habit from 1997 until 2023. <laughs> what he'll have to do is he'll have to still open a can every day just for that. <laughs> That's that right. Moment, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Funny, this is not my favorite. A can? No. Fountain? It's is fountain the best? Fountain in a glass cup. Yeah. And it has to be the perfect kind of fountain. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I feel you. Have you ever had, it's a complete side note, have you ever had TNT, oh, donut, it? TNT donuts in Midland? I've not. I'm curious your thoughts on their dark pepper. So I don't know if I, if their dark pepper is actually the best that I've ever had or if it's just nostalgic because I grew up having it. I got you. And so I want to find a way to, try to bring it to, yeah. Wait, so we'll, we'll be in Midland a lot. I'll oh, send you. You know what though? It stinks though. Is we'll be in Midland a lot for like track meets and football games. So. They'll be closed. So what's weird is they're open from like seven from like seven p.m. until night. like one in the morning, and then they're oh, open like okay. six a.m. to two. So they have this weird oh, schedule. So, so I'll send, be open. Yeah, okay. I'll send you the ones we've tried a few since I've left Midland, and a handful of them just aren't good anymore. I'll send you the address to okay. the one that's like 
Uh, we stop at we stop at every time we go to Midland. Yeah. Nice. Good to know. Good to know, man. So on the way out here to record, we were discussing uh I was discussing my PCCs with Micah and I had brought up that I want to discuss the Asbury <clears throat> The Asbury Revival. I was so focused on if I'm pronouncing it correctly <laughs> that my throat just gave out. I was like, you're not going to be able to do it. The, As- the, As- the Asbury Revival. <laughs> the Asbury Revival. So um, I feel like this has kind of, uh, if you haven't seen it, it, I feel like you kind of have to be blind to stuff going on. If these stuff's being shared all the time, especially in February while it was happening. It was on yeah, the news. If, if you're normally was, on social media of any kind. Social yeah. media. Well, and there was a lot of local it news was on, as well. well it was on were, national news. Oh, yeah. So, like, I feel like it was covered on a lot of media outlets sure, from sure. social media to the news. If you haven't seen it, you're probably in a really good place in life where you're not watching TV <laughs> you know, or on social media. <laughs> on social media. <laughs> congrats. So you're happy yeah, we, and healthy. <laughs> we applaud your healthy <laughs> life. You're only listening to podcasts, <laughs> which right. means you probably still heard about it. But True, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so to give a little bit of a rundown about it, the Asbury revival is at Asbury university in Wilmore, Kentucky. It was there for, it happened for two weeks in February. So last month, and basically what had happened from my understanding was there was a normal chapel service where they had a normal time of worship. They had a normal time of preaching. Um, the, the preacher closed out in prayer and then the worship team came back up to kind of close out the service. And one student that I had listened to had said that they had what they called like soft closing of like, if you guys want to stay, you're more than welcome to, but you're dismissed to go to classes and mm-hmm. stuff. And so he said he stayed for like five or 10 minutes afterward. And then he headed over to his afternoon class. And when he got out of his afternoon class, as he opened the doors onto the campus, he could hear singing and he goes, wait a minute, they're still going. And then he headed back over there to see what was going on. And then for two weeks after that, um, super cool. There was mm-hmm. just, there was times of, there was a, just a time of singing, a time of, a time of worship, times of prayer. Uh, apparently there was still some more speakers kind of, or there was more speaking interjected within there, but the majority of it was worship and prayer for the course of I two think weeks. There were some testimonies. Yeah. 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 They, I saw some clips that were passing around microphone where people were proclaiming, um, what God was doing in their life or they were praying over the mm-hmm. crowd. Definitely some salvations. Um, yeah. 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 Some people came in on the Lord and we're, it got to the point where people were, um, how outrageous is that? That people were getting saved. Like I'm such a skeptic right? that <laughs> <laughs> there was a, I, the last one, the last clip I saw said that there were people coming in globally. I know a lot of people mentioned yeah. that people were coming in from the nation. I didn't know people were flying in internationally to come to witness this thing. And so got, to the, That's cool. got to the point where, um, they had they had the main auditorium where the chapel was was uh, taking place full, and people were waiting outside. They did some overflow rooms, but most people wanted to go be at the main parts. They said they had three hundred to four hundred people waiting outside at a time, pretty much. There was, I think, the guy being interviewed was talking about Louis Giglio. He said there was a pretty high profile, like young adults type pastor who did come. He's like, but what's funny is our day and age, he would come grab the mic, like not from not saying that Louis Giglio is the type of person who would do this, but like most of the time people would take advantage of this big opportunity and get get a celebrity type pastor to come in there. But what he mentioned, all he said was there was a pretty high profile pastor that came at 3 a.m., prayed and worshiped for a couple hours and then left. That's cool. And I'm pretty sure he's talking about Louis Giglio because I saw the picture that Louis Giglio had posted when he was there. I like So I might not be, they might have been talking about another pastor, but it's super cool. No, it's probably him. Yeah. So there was, um, so most of the interviews and stuff that I had listened to just talked like the about other high profile pastors. Most of them would have been like making a big deal. Of thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Well, hello, I'm here. There, that, that, <laughs> that, that was, um, so a part that guy mentioned, he, all he said was, uh, was a high profile pastor. And then he mentioned other high profile pastors that were tweeting upset that they weren't asked to come preach. Are you serious? And, yes. I didn't and then, see that. So he didn't say any specific names in either case. That was good but, of him. That was yeah, diplomatic. Yeah. 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 But, and I was like, what in the world? Okay, like- so, so this right here, let's, <laughs> let's forget the revival for just a moment. And let's just, for just a second, think about the heart of two different types of preachers, right? right? So you've got one guy that sneaks in at three in the morning and worships for a few hours and then leaves. And then you have other guys pissed that they weren't invited to come and preach. Right. And so one is about Christ and one is about ego. Absolutely. And I think that that's a great framework to kind of even talk about the revival as a whole yeah. these two weeks. Is, yeah, it, is yeah. it Was it Christ or was it ego? Yeah. You know? Which is basically yeah. Yeah, what I was going to get to as well. I've got, I've got oh, other, sorry. I've, no, 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 I've got other Ooh, notes. Uh, that, that was the transition re, I was going to use. Re, was rewind. like, was <laughs> here, can I, here's, can I interject real quick? Yeah. I want to, I want to like submit an idea. Some of the debate has been over, it's funny to me, like revival. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so let me just submit an idea. Call it whatever the heck you want to call it. Yeah. There was a group of people, mostly college students, at least for a while, 
mm-hmm. gathering together to worship Jesus. People are getting saved, sharing testimonies. I saw a clip of a guy from Brazil who was talking about, I think he had gotten, I'm assuming he had gotten to the school. I don't know if it was a scholarship or what, but didn't have any money. Like when he was there, was scraping by and people started just handing him money and like throwing oh, yeah. money up on stage. So like wow. meeting each other's needs, like yep. there's yeah. things that are happening. I'll say this. I don't care what you call it. Yeah. Like, let's not, the skepticism, skepticism shouldn't come from whether it's revival or not. Cause that's kind of a stupid thing. The Bible doesn't really lay out that. Yeah. To your point, at all. people who, who have been arguing that it wasn't revival are giving three or four points. Like a revival has to look this way. Right. Yeah. And, and all we can do is say, historically, when this kind of thing has happened, mm-hmm. here's the things that seem to be linked to it. Like, and I yeah. think one of the things that every, whether we call it a revival or not, when this kind of thing has happened historically, Prayer has always been at the core of that. Yeah. I have no problem saying that kind of thing. Yeah. But not under a definition that we're we're saying limiting. Was this real or not? Because it doesn't fit the definition of what I'm saying revival is. Like sure. and my point is like, let's say that there is like a definitive, here's what revival looks like definition. Sure. Who cares? Right. There were groups of people meeting for two weeks yeah. or more. <laughs> Let's give it another Jesus. name. I don't, yeah. My point is like, I, I think the debate is stupid over whether it's revival or not. Call it is it whatever the heck you want to call it. It was happening. The, the questions that we have to ask about it, I think, are were Christ, was Christ proclaimed? Yes. Yeah. Uh, was Christ honored? Yes. And, and instead of trying to define whether or not it's revival. And, and I think that people... Like you were saying, Pierce, I didn't know that, that there were preachers who were like, why didn't you invite us? What a ridiculous... <laughs> that was second information for me, but... Yeah, but still... I don't what know why, a, he would say, why he'd make it up, though. What a ridiculous thing if that's happening. Even yeah. if it was one dude. That's, yeah. Was, what it is, you? was it you, Pierce? It was me, What, yeah. what a stupid <laughs> my, attitude. My side podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... Uh, don't you know who I am? <laughs> Let me come yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. uh, I, I know, I know two people personally who went up to it. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, follow them both on Facebook and just kind of watched like What's some that? of their video clips. Do what? What's that? What's Facebook? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so watched some videos that they posted from it and being in there and worshiping. And one person, uh, she did a lot of commentary about it and mm-hmm. just like how good it was and how cool it was. And then the other person was more subdued, but they just they just went and they recorded a video and they just said, man, it's really neat to see what God's doing among That's young cool. people. But both uh, both express. And, and what's funny is one is a, a Baptist pastor and one is a, a, a Pentecostal uh, preacher, uh, <laughs> pastor. And, and so they're like kind of these two bookends, but they both went and experienced it and they both came away going, man, it's super cool to see what God's doing. So cool. And I thought that that was really neat. You know, that like- yeah. It here, feels to me like God- God was like breaking down some walls yeah. with it. I think that there, I was sharing with the church a few weeks ago, like there's, I hear so many comments from what we would call boomers now, like adults <laughs> that are, which is, I guess, technically that's me. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I'm not obviously a baby boomer, but the kids will use that for anybody that they consider old. Mm-hmm. Them. Yeah. But that boomers would describe kids now, including college kids as like this, like kind of worthless generation who's like, has this woke agenda and Mm -hmm. they seem to blame all the like political chaos on Mm -hmm. the young kids. And it feels the same. Like they're stupid. It feels to me like God's kind of like, well, you think that they're stupid. Watch what I'm going to do. It almost feels to me like the same thing that Jesus did with his disciples. Yeah. Where these people were, um, they didn't make the cut in terms Mm -hmm. of being rabbis. They, they, they weren't smart enough in terms of like the Jewish system of learning. And then Jesus took them and then he changed the world through these most likely 11 teenagers, older teenagers, early 20s, probably like yeah. young men, basically, yeah. and changed the world. It's I think you see that throughout the throughout the whole scripture. I mean, God, mm-hmm. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, David, like there's all yeah. these young people that the culture is like, you're worthless, that God's right. like, I'm going to I'm going to rock the world with these young. Yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things that I think is interesting and, and maybe I'm off here, but like, uh, so in 1997, I want to say it was 97, it might've been 98, but in 97, uh, Paradigm started in Lubbock mm-hmm. and John Randalls was uh, the speaker at that. And uh, the first Baptist worship band, uh, our college worship band was the worship band there. I was still living in Lubbock at this point. I was part of the leadership team and the prayer team for that. Um, but prior to that, Grace was going in Abilene mm-hmm. and Matt Chandler was speaking at Grace. And so prior to Paradigm getting started this previous spring, like there were groups of us that would drive over to Abilene um, to go to Grace because 
it was awesome and it was cool to be part of this thing where people yeah. were coming alive, you know? Mm -hmm. And and you'd go in for this hour and a half thing and sometimes it would be an hour and a half and sometimes it'd be three hours. And no one's going, uh, went for three hours instead of an hour and a half. That's skeptical. Was, was that real? Was right. that authentic? But yeah. we're, and, and so like everybody's like, well, yeah, but that's a little bit different. I, I don't, I don't know why it is. Yeah. Like there, there was something at that moment that was poignant for many of us that mm -hmm. was drawing us into a deeper relationship with Christ. And, and like, I mean, what, what if, what if your Sunday service next week, what if it goes 30 minutes longer because people are just like, man, I'm just not done. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, I, I don't know. I think, I, I think it, I think we're too picky and too critical of, of works of God, <laughs> you know, like we're, yeah, we're, we're looking, we're looking for it to fit in a certain box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so like, when one of the, does it ever across the scripture fit into a cultural viewpoint of what they, the culture thought it was supposed to be? Right. Right. And, and so some people have said, well, you know, I heard a demon was cast out or I've heard that maybe there were healings or whatever. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. demons still exist. People, people still get healed. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, the three of us at this table, at least we're not cessationists. We believe that those gifts are still in use. We mm -hmm. believe that those gifts have always been about pointing people well, and, to Jesus. And yeah. you made a great point. Just kind of mentioning that on the way up here today, um, <clears throat> about healing, which I think is, is an interesting conversation to have. Um, but like, I think that it's funny, even people who are cessationists, um, wouldn't negate that God still heals or yeah. that God would get rid of a demon. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't say Jesus didn't do it. Right. And so it's, it's funny that like it gets tied to the issue for them, I assume, or people who have an issue with it is that it's the person who's casting the demon mm -hmm. out. Right. And I got, I got no qualms saying there's, there's a lot of fakes oh, out sure. there who do that kind of junk. Yeah. And I think that that's probably what the response is to, like the the fakeness of it. I mean, mm -hmm. if you if you gone to a Benny Hinn yeah. deal in you know years past, you could see the fakeness yeah, going sure. on, and a lot of that's been exposed. But it doesn't mean that's not real and it doesn't happen. And so then to say like, well, you have this movement, in, you know, in the the late '60s that brought in all this this kind of stuff with the casting out of demons and like these like strange perspectives of the gifts. Um, that you could argue are probably not necessarily a biblical viewpoint in the intention of it. But in the same way, I'd say that people who are cessationists, um, and if you're listening, you're cessationists, show me a verse besides your first Corinthians 13, whatever, 13 yeah. verse where it says, when the perfect comes, these things will cease. First of all, show me in that context why you think that's a scripture and not speaking of Jesus when it refers to the perfect, because I'm yeah. pretty sure it's referring to Jesus. Nothing yeah, else is sure. perfect yeah. except for Jesus um, in regards to that context. Second of all, where else in the scripture are you making that point from? Right. Mm -hmm. So it's that these things are gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like it's dumb to say, okay, like even if you were to say, even if you were to say, I don't like that there was a demon cast out. So what you're saying is, is that one instance of a demon getting cast out means you don't like the people were getting saved. You don't like the people were singing to Jesus. You don't like the people were sharing about yeah. the things God is doing in their <laughs> life. Like what I have to say is you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't like that someone was freed from demonic oppression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How ridiculous. Which like complete side note though. So that's what I was going to say as well is that one of the, one of the things against it that I'd seen was uh, somebody said, well, if they fix their theology, then I'll get into it. Wow. And, yeah. And so what's funny that they mean, Asbury as a whole, like I didn't get or, the whole context. It, okay. was, it was just that quote. I have no problem if they're talking about the gospel. Yeah. If they, what they mean is yeah. fix your theology on the gospel yeah. and maybe theology is the wrong words, like fix your perspective. But if we're just talking about a disagreement over gifts yeah. or it's, a, it's a, is it That's, a Methodist university? Uh, It's Wes yeah, Wesleyan. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> okay. So it's maybe more generic. So, yeah. charismatic Methodist somewhere in there that's both founded on Wesleyan theology. Oh, okay. So, so like, but like either way, like I have no, I have no problem if you're, that statement isn't referring to the gospel, but if we're mm -hmm. just talking about like disagreements over some things that aren't gospel related, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's my, that's my assumption. So I went through, I wanted to double check exactly what they, not what they meant, but just like, what is the basis of faith or the statement of faith for, for Asbury? And I went through there and um, I did see some issues with this as outside after I read the statement of faith. Um, they they have some pretty egalitarian language in their statement of faith. Mm -hmm. And then I had seen some other people and that said- What do you mean statement of faith? Uh, if you go to their website, they just have a tab that says statement of faith. And so it's basically a beliefs page. And so oh, okay. like- you just So you're not read. talking about, you're talking about generic statement of faith, not specifically gospel. No, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So it's, that, that's what they call their beliefs page. Yeah, no, I'm with you. 
Um, and so I did see some egalitarian language and, uh, and I was like, maybe it's what they meant. And then later I saw people like, Hey, you know, they ordain women ministers. Right. And so like they were trying oh, to make on. that as like, and make that as the means by which we can't really trust what's going on there. And did you see the SBC just kicked out Rick Warren's church? I did. Yeah. How crazy is that, man? Really? <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. They're sticking with their guns. Because they're, or they're basically, or I don't know if they're ordaining, but they have women pastors, uh -huh. which is a whole nother conversation for us, which I, we'll I have, can't wait to have that we'll have conversation. Soon, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so what they're doing is, is they're, they're taking either their own, they're taking a stance that is made, may it be at the university or may it be by people that are just, that just happen to be there that they're seeing YouTube clips of and they're saying, therefore we can throw, we have to throw out everything because I heard there was another clip I saw that this guy um, was watching through some of the live streams. He had noticed uh, the demon being, or the demon uh, situation demon being cast out. He had noticed some speaking in tongues and he was like, that's some real strange fire stuff, man. I'm going to have to say this is all wrong. This is all fake. Oh, and so what goodness. he's doing is he's taking his cessationist viewpoint yep. and he's saying, therefore, because from his perspective, because I know this doesn't happen anymore, therefore this entire thing is wrong. Or I love is how bad. he says, I know. I know, right? <laughs> the, to my point a second ago, make me a biblical case, you well, freaking idiot. Yeah. Well, they're all in their own little bubbles. Man. Yeah, but here's the thing. Pop your bubbles. <laughs> yes. like, and we talked about this. Uh, nuts. <laughs> That's such an aggressive, like, a, your a, bubble such a, like a friendly statement, but also so aggressive. I'm going to pop your bubbles, man. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm know sick and tired yeah. of this junk. I'm sick and tired of Christianity being this way. Like, I, well, I have agree. no problem if someone says, I disagree with your theology. Right. But the moment you're going to dismiss the gospel because of, of that, in my yes. mind, you're like teetering on a false teacher kind of, I'm not Absolutely. telling you that you're a false teacher. I'm saying you're teetering on teaching it from a false, you're saying Absolutely. the gospel is only the gospel when it's the gospel plus my theology, right. plus yeah. my perspective. Right. And honestly, if I got, if I was in a place leading worship and someone said that, I would probably kick him in the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> not even joking. Pop their the, the, the thing about it is that we, we, we say in churches that Christ is paramount, that Christ is the, the, the highest, the pinnacle of truth. Christ yeah. is our source of salvation. Christ is the source of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And yet we're divided over all the things that aren't Jesus. Absolutely. So dumb. Yeah. And, and so instead so instead of sitting here and picking apart Asbury's colleges, whatever. Ask, Which I probably don't agree with either. Mm -hmm. on, there, on that, there like might a, be something, yeah. On, on the a lot of the, I, like, there, there, there was a lot of language used that I was like, we wouldn't say it that way either. But like, I could go to a million college. Well, there's not a million college. Well, I could go to like a lot of colleges <laughs> and say like I don't agree with this perspective. But I, I pulled Absolutely. it up. I pulled up their page right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So um, how did you get internet? Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. So uh, talks about Jesus. Talks <laughs> Thanks, about David. justification that uh, all or God graciously justifies and regenerates all who trust in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Believers become children of God and begin to live in holiness through faith in Christ and by the sanctifying spirit. Okay. And I'm like, heck yeah. Okay. Sounds dope. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Your point you is, know? there's probably things in there that we would be like, I don't, I'm not sure we'd land well, there. It's like what but Pierce said. I might not say it that way because yeah. there's implications, there's connotations, right? But what they're saying about Jesus seems to be right. hundred yeah. percent. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I'm going to worship alongside them, yeah. you know? Um, that's a good point. If, if the Jesus is the core, mm -hmm. I, we can, this yep. is where I think the walls. How do we end every podcast, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus. So go ahead. Sorry. Well, here's, here's, what, here's the walls. I think God's breaking down. Um, I'm, I, I have you, us three have a different perspective of a biblical use of tongues than someone who comes from a Wesleyan background. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we could have a legit cordial, friendly conversation with those people. I don't think it would be, I don't think it would be tense. Because our perspective is we just want to know what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have people in our church who come from that background and who worship and probably looks a little bit different than the people who come from a Southern Baptist background mm -hmm. or yeah. uh, a more stoic Presbyterian background, something like that. Um, but they literally all worship together. And I think your point is genius, Ryan. Like this is the walls that are coming down is I can stand next to somebody in a worship service at a revival or whatever, at a something like it happened at Asbury. And they might have their hands lifted. And for all I know, they might be in their own perspective praying in tongues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we could have a conversation about that later. Yeah. Sure. Um, which I think would be a really short conversation because I actually don't have as uh, much of an issue with that yeah. as like the public. Right, thing. right, right. But we're literally both worshiping Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we could have a conversation about the the other stuff later, but I'm going to stand next to that person and worship Jesus because yeah. we're worshiping the same Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. From the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, what's funny is I see things in their page. I don't, I haven't gotten to what you have said. We wouldn't say it that way. Mm -hmm. I see things on their page that I'm like, the three of us would agree with, but 
a lot of our friends wouldn't. That's fine. <laughs> so like one of the things they say about, uh, they have a section called entire sanctification and they say through the sanctifying grace, oh, yeah. uh, the Holy Spirit delivers us from rebellion towards God and makes possible wholehearted love for God and for others. Interesting. That's yep. great. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's what the Holy Spirit does. <laughs> and it says this doesn't make believers faultless and it doesn't prevent the possibility of falling into sin, but they must live daily by faith in the forgiveness and cleansing provided for them through Jesus Holy Christ. Holy crap, that's fantastic. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yes, <laughs> amen. And, and we're, <laughs> if they're Wesleyan, probably where we would differ from them is, and interesting that they make it that statement, is they would say that then you could lose that or you could give that up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a Wesleyan core. I got you. So like, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like, there are things I know we're going to disagree with, mm-hmm. with the school on from that perspective, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to gather to worship with them. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Too often people take every single theological stance and they equate it to, equate it to the gospel, equate it to, equate that same yep. weight to the gospel. It's or like, it's they, like all, that's, I think it was my struggle earlier. What you're saying is, it's the God, they say the gospel, then the gospel also has to have all these other things. Exactly. Right. It's the gospel. And yeah. Yeah. It's and not like, just Jesus. And and also there's, and I can't speak for every single one of them, obviously, but the way they come across is very much like, I am the one that gives weight and power to these things. You have to listen mm. to what I have to say, it's, which is so funny because in that instance, if you really break down what they're doing, they're actually fitting more so into a woke view of relative truth instead of anything else because they're saying what well, my oh, perspective has to be true. And gosh, if you say it that way to them, they would want to, they'd, I mean, break, that's they'd a, break your nose. You're but right. Like, that's a, that's a, well, no, I guess it's not postmodern because postmodern would say my truth is my truth. Your truth is your truth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause he, cause there would still be a fight against like, you need to change to my truth, but that's basically what they're saying is they're trying to assert their truth. There's a lot of what we're it's, seeing now. It's woke, but it's not postmodern. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, and, and also too, like they, they might even in their own mind, aside from that discussion of relative truth, they might in their mind, see the gospel as like the weightiest part, but it's standing up. So like for instance, we would say this is probably the weightiest part of this table. Right. But the second we remove these thin legs, the table doesn't become a table anymore. And so like they may say, yeah, yeah, yeah. The biggest part's the gospel. But if you kick out from underneath it, one of their belief structures, your, it's falling apart point, in their perspective. Your point is foundationally for them underneath the gospel or like, yeah, holding up the gospel or all these other theological all these other details. That's, that's, a smart, the gospel that's a smart way to say the, that. Cause I think that's probably true. Mm-hmm. And at least from their perspective, yeah. someone who says, um, I don't like what's going on. I don't like the people are getting saved or people are worshiping Jesus because I disagree with them in theology. That's how it has to be is that mm-hmm. they feel like those things are foundational mm-hmm. to be able to believe that gospel. Yeah. 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 We've, I think we've, we've decided that people have to have a certain sort of like mental ability or mental capacity to be valid. And, yeah. and it, it flies in the face of what Christ says that unless you believe like a child, you mm-hmm. can't receive the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. And, and so what's interesting is I, I came to faith very early. I was three years old. I met a guy years ago at a camp that I was preaching at, and he was a sponsor for the middle school boys, 75 years old. And I just asked him one day, cause it was in Texas, it was at Alto Frio, you it's know, hot. and it's hot. And, and I was like, Hey man, I was like, if you don't mind me asking, I was like, I'm not trying to be rude. You're 75. I was like, why are you with these middle school boys that are stinky <laughs> and loud and like, And he goes, man, he goes, I just met Christ five years ago. So he met Christ at 70 and he was like, and I don't have a lot of years left. I just want to enjoy everything I can about Jesus. So I think what people assume is that Ryan at three, I got lucky. This guy at 70, he, he was well enough rounded, intellectual enough to kind of put his faith in Jesus. And this is what we were talking about earlier, like with the atheist guy saying, you know, like, how do I put faith in this? If I, I don't know, like. It isn't the mental capacity of the person. It nope. isn't the theological doctrines that they believe that nope. make them a Christian. It's it's Christ. Christ yeah. is the the thing that you've got to know. And so when somebody comes to me and says, man, I don't know a lot, but I know that I believe in Christ and I believe that he is God and that he died and was raised from the dead. Mm-hmm. And my faith is in him. It's funny. We don't believe that that has power. Right. Paul says in Romans 1, I'm not ashamed because of, of the gospel because it's the power of God for salvation for all who believe. Right. Yeah. First of the Jew for the Gentile. It's the gospel that's the power, not my ability to say it, not my ability to reason it out with somebody, not their ability to reason well, it out. Well, that's exactly what Paul it. says, right? And he says, so that your faith will not rest on, on the wisdom own. of men, but yeah. on on Christ. It's the, the gospel is the power. I would say that yeah. the spirit is like, is is doing something across the country right now. Yeah. And it's the gospel that's the power. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the gospel that saves people, not me. Yeah. yeah. N- not, none of the other things, whether you believe that, listen, like, I, I, you've got to believe, right, that demons still exist. I would, like, you've got to believe that. So yeah. if you believe that people can't cast out demons, how, how do they, 
how do they come to leave? Is it, is it just, is yeah. it just, you know, one day you're like, well, I feel like there's a demon in me and I don't want any more, but then you're casting. I don't know. I think, it's they, like, I think that group argues probably they would struggle with the idea of demon possession. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it happened in the Bible, but it doesn't happen anymore. It's a nuanced conversation because yeah, it's, it's so influence. Strange. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, the ones of conversations I've had, they wouldn't disagree that there's influence of spirits. Some of them would say demon possession, but it's also, I mean, I'm just going to say this bluntly. It's also from a perspective that, um, you can't get saved unless you're from a specific group of people. Right. And so if that's the case, I don't give a hell what people do in the rest of their life. If they're going to get saved, they're going to get saved. Like right. spend the rest of your life demon possessed. If you're supposed to get saved, then you'll get saved. And whether that's true or not. That's their position. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, whether, yours. not mine. Yeah. Definitely not mine. Whether that's true or not from their perspective, I think what they're missing is that the power um, is, the goal is the gospel. Yeah. And so like, I say this lightly. You probably won't. It's okay. I, you don't have to. I think here's what I think is happening. I think there have been a few decades of the enemy st- putting a stranglehold on the West, specifically the United States of America, um, by making Christians fight over things that don't mean that much mm-hmm. in terms of eternity. Yeah. And I think that God's breaking it down right now. I think He's good. I think He's about to take out. Um, He's about to kick the legs out from underneath all those those yeah, people yeah, who yeah. think that the gospel is supported by other perspectives of what they believe yeah, theologically. Yeah. And I think he's about to, I think God's doing something cool. I also think that because I see the opposite of a gospel happening like crazy. What do you mean by that? It seems like the enemy's work is like ever growing mm. and more obvious and more you. influential. Um, and, I think that I think we are witnessing. It's funny because, like, you see, I'm not going to like name all the things that I've seen recently, but like, you see these things happening where it seems like a pretty obvious work of the enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you some examples because I think it's fair. Um, people dressing up like like Satan on the Grammys. Mm-hmm. True. Um, there have been some some points made about the Rihanna halftime show that I'm not sure about, but like have some weight um there's the Lil Nas X stuff True. back I mean so there's just like all these yeah. all these things that are like slyly working their way in I just learned this recently um I knew it had roots but I didn't know how far deep it was um I saw a clip from a guy who was like a, a trained yoga instructor and the whole goal of yoga is to like align yourself with one of these Hindu gods mm. that's the yeah. entirety of the yeah there was a spiritual implement to it yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is stretching wrong? No, but I'm saying like how they, how the enemy's like slightly working is like, oh, let me teach you how to stretch correctly so you can lose weight. But then I'm going to like slide you this under the table. Like here's, here's the goal is to like align yourself with this mm. Hindu God and behind every idol, there's a demon. A demon. Yeah. Um, I think that there's that work that's been continually going on. And I think how we're seeing it, I think what the spirit's doing on the other end is he's like, here you go. I'm going to take a bunch of ridiculously immature Worthless college students. <laughs> yeah. And. But, yeah. Yeah. Because God has used what is foolish to sh- shame the wise. And yeah, yeah, people yeah. think these kids don't know anything. Yeah. And I, I will tell you. Maybe they don't. Maybe they don't. I, and that's I, not the point. I think that's what people are missing. Right. I, I will tell you that I, I know the Bible better now. I think my theology is better now at 47 than it was at 25. But, A million percent. But at 25. Like there were a group of us, man, that our aim was Jesus and we would worship together and, right and we would pray together. Yeah. Um, Mike and not Micah, you guys are more current. Scott and Ryan and I, uh, and then Ryan had to bounce, I think, cause he had work, but Scott and Ryan and I started and Scott and I finished and we prayed through the entire Psalms one night. Like, so we were, wow. we were taking turns and we were, we made each Psalm a prayer mm. and we personalized it, which with okay, that's probably not the best way to handle that. But <laughs> what we did is we we committed an entire night to pray through the Psalms. Mm-hmm. And we just, we sat on the floor in the dark and we had our, our coffee and our, you know, uh, hot tea. And we sat there and took turns praying through the Psalms mm-hmm. until we'd gotten through all 150 of them. 
And and we were who doing Psalm one nineteen. That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> but who did one? Whoever did Psalm one nineteen also did one seventeen, which is very <laughs> short. So uh, it bounces out. <laughs> but because uh, it was just two of us by that point, but we prayed. <laughs> we we prayed through all of them, right? Mm-hmm. And we would do things like that. Um, and and we wept for our friends. And we it was like, fake though, because because you can't take the Psalms from a personal perspective, right? So it's all fake. Yeah, yeah. None, none of it mattered. <laughs> none of it mattered. You know? yeah. but those kinds of things. Which were is happening. funny. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. Yeah, I I'm making that statement truthfully, not about it being fake, but like I don't think you, I don't think if you want to look at the Psalms correctly, you don't look at it from personal perspective. You can't. It doesn't mean. That what you guys were doing wasn't authentic in the right heart, and that the that the spirit wasn't working through that. He was growing us and you. shaping us. And yeah. it, like I don't understand why we have to fit into this intellectual perfect box to be yeah. able to let the let the yeah. spirit of God work. Yeah, yeah. There there were a lot of years that I, what I was preaching, not about the gospel, not about what matters, but there were a lot of years that what I was preaching I was wrong on, but. I was God's growing still using, and, and yeah, and God's still using that. Like yeah. if the expectation is, is that be I can't, perfect. I can't be used of God until I say everything correctly Ugh. and Good non, luck. non-essential yeah. issues and non-gospel issues, right. then we should all just quit. Yeah. Cause none of us are going to get it right. Completely. No. Yeah. No. Heck and no. it's, it's, I think this, uh, we haven't mentioned this yet. I think what the skeptics are missing is the heart of this. Mm-hmm. You, you have a heart of, of people saying, I, Here's what I feel like the, the people flooding in. I saw I saw a clip of a video of uh, like a digital street sign outside of the university saying um, at full capacity, please watch online. Like that's oh, on the yeah. street, not even on campus. Like yeah. that's on the road coming in. Like, wow. please don't come because we're, we're full. People are coming apparently, like you said, from all over the world yeah. to see this. Why? I My guess is the majority of people coming aren't coming so that they can say I was part of this, but they want to, they want to see and be part of this seemingly really incredible thing that I think people have been longing for mm-hmm. right, and waiting for. Well, yeah. and, and there is zero doubt in my mind that there will be people who go away from this and their families will be different. There are college kids on that campus whose marriages will be shaped by this. There are their pastors. entire life will yep. be different. There are pastors who are going back to their churches and taking a freshness into their churches and their pulpits that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Like this has been medicine for a lot of people. Yeah. And or yes, and probably a spark. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for now sure. you see it breaking out of. I mean, it, again, I don't really care to call it revival because I don't really care. Someone wants to in yeah in twenty years wants to look back and go, this was a revival. Great. What what's happening now is there's other college campuses where college students are going, oh, dope. And yeah, they yeah. start to meet together. I don't I don't care if it's like they're just if they go, this is this is something that God seems to be doing in our campus too, or if they're just going, you know what? That's cool. Yeah. Like you were guys driving to to Grace from yeah. Lubbock. I want to be part of something like that. So let's do it here. Yeah. Let's just gather together for worship. Who cares? If it's like revival or not, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's people getting together for long periods of time to worship Jesus. Yeah, Absolutely. and their faith is deepening. And their yeah, I saw a uh, clip of Tucker Carlson. Did y'all see this clip? Mm-hmm. Tucker Carlson, Fox News <clears throat> show, um, had this whole segment. It was pretty awesome. I don't ever watch Tucker. Uh, I just don't watch news at all. But mm-hmm. um, he's he does this section where he's telling people what happened. He said we reached out to Asbury University and said we'd like to come like document this thing that's been going on. And the university reached back out and said, um, we'd like to like politely ask you not to come because mm. we feel like what's going on here isn't something that is to be politicized or we don't want mm. it to be something that's made like a big deal of. It's right. literally just a bunch of- We don't want it to be a gimmick or used yeah. that Right, it's yeah. literally just a bunch of, and they didn't say it this way, but, but a bunch of no-name yeah. people getting together for worship and we don't we don't want that to be- messed up yeah. you know and it was like super polite I'm, I'm obviously jacking up the way it was said mm-hmm. and then tucker and his crew's response was okay yeah and he said we respect that he said tucker, cool. uh, tucker was like he goes uh most people in this situation want as much publicity as they can get he goes mm-hmm. but so because they said no he goes we realize this must be something really awesome that's going on so i'm like cool. yeah. here's a dude i mean i don't know if he's a believer or not yeah like here's a dude on national national news that did a whole section on how they weren't able to go do a story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So I don't, I'm, I'm still struggling. Maybe someone's going to be like, Oh, here's a reason to be skeptical. And it probably won't end well in the conversation, <laughs> Look, <laughs> but I'm still waiting for that. Cause it was, it seems to be like pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, un- unless, a, unless somebody can show me a clip where, 
um, a preaching diff- another gospel. A different means of salvation has yep. been preached. Unless yeah, somebody yeah. can show me a clip where someone has disparaged Christ mm-hmm. and the people are cheering and clapping or whatever. I would jump on that bandwagon quick. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. But if, if, if you're ticked about, you said the, the guy was from Brazil or whatever that they were giving a lot of money to or yeah. helping out. Or if you're ticked by, you know, somebody was speaking in tongues or a demon was cast out, man, it, I, I think the question you have to ask yourself is, do you value more that people know Jesus or do you value more that they follow your theological bent? Yep. Uh, and and for me and for us sitting at this table, it's always going to be Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also wonder if people know that they're probably their theological bent. Most of the people today has probably only been around about 500 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the apostles had no problem with any of the things that other people were saying they had yeah. problems with. Nope. Well, understand too that like, Kind of what we were saying a second ago, like that you can keep Christ as core. What could be simpler than that? What could be simpler than that? <laughs> when while also acknowledging that these details don't matter as much as Christ as as Christ. Like yeah. that these details don't matter as much. So I think I mean we 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 had a conversation with a college student years ago where like where we were we were talking about atonement, we were talking about these different things. And through a conversation with him, it got to the point where he was like, Well, how am I even saved then? Because yeah, because he believed that the atonement happened a certain way. And we were talking about the atonement happening um apart from the wrath of God being poured out on Jesus. Wow. And he was like, How how do I even know I'm saved? But basically it got to that point in the conversation. Mm-hmm. I'd never and thought so, about that to just finish, but remind yeah. me a second to give you my thought on this. I never thought about that before. So there's at least one example right there. And we're seeing people's responses here where it is apparent that what they're doing is they're equating as we said a second ago they're equating these details to the saving Salvation. grace of jesus mm-hmm. yeah so the only say? reason you would have a struggle with that i don't know why i haven't thought about this till now i feel stupid but <laughs> the only reason you would struggle with um like if you're the like in, from his position from his like uber reform position which is where he was at mm-hmm. he, what he told me was if this when we were talking about atonement, he was like, if what you're saying is true, that means the gospel I believed is false. Yeah. It had never hit me till that's maybe not quite how he said it, but that's what he was implying. Mm-hmm. Till just now that like maybe that means that the gospel he was taught wasn't the gospel. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Cause you wouldn't it's, struggle with that. No, not at all. You like, would go the gospel's dependent upon those things. Yeah, because because our our reformed friends who aren't in that extreme camp, right? Um, what's core for them is Jesus. Right. Mm-hmm. And they might say we disagree on these other things, but sure. it doesn't shake their salvation. The, their strong feelings on other issues to them are still secondary yeah. to Christ. Yeah, even like yeah. even like Sean telling us about listening to the the atonement episode. Yeah, he's obviously reformed, and he was like, "I don't think it changes anything for me because from his perspective, Christ is key. Christ is key, and what was accomplished at the cross was atonement. Right. Mm-hmm. The conversation wasn't, and he called me out on this, and I think he's probably right." That what someone had said in the episode is I didn't like that the foundation of Reformed theology was substitutionary penal atonement. And I think he's right. It's actually not. Yeah. Like if you want to be technical, I think where I was referring to um, was that the conversations I've had with people who sure. have that perspective typically speak of atonement from a, from a substitutionary penal atonement. So that was my assumption. He's right. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. not technically. But my point is. He didn't go. You know what? This I can't believe this because this would mean that mm-hmm. I'm not saved. The only reason you would say that is if you were taught a gospel that wasn't founded on Christ, but yeah. was founded on some non-Christ biblical theological conversations. Absolutely. And that makes me really sad now that I missed a chance to have that particular conversation mm. yeah, with him yeah. because maybe he wasn't actually saved. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. If you're wondering what we're referring to, um, April 12th podcast from 2022 is the episode you'd want to listen to. Talking about, about the atonement. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Which he will mess to, you up. To uh, to that point, Micah, like if if we have these conversations about the about what happened at Asbury, uh, about what's happening at other college campuses and different things happening around the world, I saw a clip that was like, look look, look at all these revivals happening around the world right now, and I had I didn't have enough time to look and see if those were clips from the past or actually from mm. current stuff, but there was different stuff from um, from a lot of different areas, so it was cool to see, even if it wasn't from right now, it, it's it cool could to be see. breaking out. Yeah. So historically, historically, mm-hmm. when you see what we call revival breaking out. It tended to be in like areas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was what's different now? What they didn't have back then was internet, internet yeah. global reach, cell phones to be able yeah. to like every like everybody in the world has access to a cell phone now. People are Absolutely. like let's do about third world countries. It's cheaper to own a cell phone that you just pay minutes on mm-hmm. than it is to have a landline. So mm-hmm. I've I've seen people in 
in Southeast Asia standing outside a grass hut in yeah. like cut off jean shorts and no shirt and no shoes holding a cell phone. Absolutely. Yeah. So like everybody has access. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure there's like a small part sure. of the world where there's like no cell service on some island. Like, but the, yeah. the majority of people have access. That's what's different now. So that's what's cool is like it, revival historically has, has broken out in areas because that's people hear about it by word of mouth. Right. Yeah. It could be that it's breaking out across the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the access. Absolutely. Well, what's cool about that too, like not that it's wrong to utilize the tools we have for like to utilize the reach that we have now, but what's cool about this is that this is having global reach without wanting the intention of global reach. And mm. so like I, while I'm not saying that the intention to have global reach is wrong, I just think this is, that's a cool aspect. It of was, this. you're saying it wasn't the goal. The goal there yeah, wasn't the, a group of people that yeah. said like, you know what, let's do something to see if we can reach the world. Exactly. It was yeah. literally just like, just college kids worshiping. worshiping. Yeah. And then it's slowly, but surely like it reached, it reached their surrounding areas. It reached the nation. Now it's reached no the world. No question and, that the, it's been ex exposure around the world absolutely. because it's, it's been so flooded on social media accounts and yeah, internet in general. So yeah, yeah. no question. It's had a, a global reach, but I love your point. Not that it was intended to. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just, it's just really cool to see the Lord work that way. And what I was going to say a second ago is that, is, is that acknowledging that seemingly a lot of the, the issues, the kickback to this happening in Asbury is coming from a, from, from a lot of stances where they're upholding these details, these theological details, instead of upholding Christ, um, to encourage ourselves as well as listeners and watchers to engage in the conversation from a perspective of Jesus instead of from a perspective of debate. Mm, right. um, and so I'm not saying that you, that's what you did with, with the guy I mentioned earlier, but acknowledging that like, okay, because you're putting so much weight here, do you think that if those details were to shift or to be different, would that change Jesus to you? And that's the bigger conversation yeah. to have. And so 100%. what's cool about this is I think that it has not only brought a bunch of people to say, man, I want to worship the way that um, the way that we're seeing worship take place mm -hmm. in Asbury. I want to see God move in the same way um, that God is moving in Asbury in my campus. I want to see the Lord do these things here. We're also seeing more and more just individual based conversations break out of like, what do you think about this? Yeah. Yeah. And so hopefully keeping in the, within those conversations as well, that us as well as, as, as other people can keep Christ at the center of that and say, and point back to the gospel, not point back, not make it a debate about details. Well, here's sense. something that's interesting. Uh, thought, Micah, uh, you pointed out several very public ways that people have talked about Satan or, I mean, like there was, I forget what concert it was, but it's also happened in the last month or something where in red on the back of the stage, they kept, they'd flash the word Satan up oh, on yeah, the yeah. screen. Oh, and then uh, there might've the, been Grammys. I don't know. And then there was the Disney thing. Yeah. With with the Christmas deal and everybody's like, oh, they just messed up Santa, but like they left it. Oh, yeah. You yeah, still yeah. watch it on Disney and like I just saw someone post recently like, holy crap, my kid was watching this. Yeah. This isn't like when they posted it live. This is like they left it. Yeah. yeah. So if they left it, that means they it's left it on yeah. purpose. Yeah. And it so, doesn't say Santa. It says Satan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's here's all these really big names and really big companies. And then you have a whole group of nobodies. <laughs> right. Yeah. And 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 so so what it what it does, I think, is it shows it shows how the enemy works versus how God works. Absolutely. Yeah. And and what what is happening is from this little university with this this body, small, relatively small assembly. Mm -hmm. A couple of thousand people is still re relatively small. Yeah. And and then people are traveling. Uh, across the country and across apparently globally to come to this place and now taking this passion back. And, and it's just like, it's, it's God going, okay, hit my turn. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, like you're going to use all these big names. You're going to use, and I'm going to continue using it's nobodies because the, the aim is Jesus. Yeah, not man. It's my name. Yeah. My name. Yeah. Yeah. Not there's the people a, who are disseminating it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Acts. I just preached this in Tom Ball not too long ago for Cody. Um, Acts 5, I love this. Uh, when the disciples get um, beaten, beaten mm -hmm. it says they left, uh, yeah. 41, they left the council rejoicing because they had been considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of Christ. the name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And I think that's, this is exactly what you're saying. Like yeah. this is, there is only one name that matters. Yeah, And I, I like, I'll close this sermon uh, with like just some thoughts. Like, um, I forget exactly what it is. Like, the prophets waited years to see the revelation of yeah. the name. And it's like, I forget, I, I like walk through all these things, but the point is like, there is only one name that matters. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and so. 
Well, I think Act, you're right. Acts like it's, 412, there is no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I think this is, you're probably right. This, this is God saying, I'm, I'm not elevating people. Right. I'm elevating yeah. me. Yeah. And using, I think it's genius what you're saying. <laughs> the enemy's trying to use famous people and God's Big like, platforms that are going to be on every, like they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then this, the same kind of reach and even bigger because it's happening worldwide. Like this, yeah. there's a bigger reach happening from a few <laughs> unnamed people. It's not fair. For the enemy. No. It's not fair. No. <laughs> He's trying his best and God's still like, boop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kick your bubble in the nuts. <laughs> With no names. I think it's I think it's amazing. I'm, like you said, Ryan, if there was someone who, who brought some stuff up and they're like, see how they were preaching the gospel that wasn't Jesus. Yeah, then I'd we'll jump, have a different podcast. I would jump on it, that. Yeah. I would 100% be like, I recant on all the things I said, but mm-hmm. I just have a... I have a feeling that's probably not going to be the case. Well, and and it's because for us, Jesus is the core. core. And yeah. and one of the things that I'll point to, and we can Pierce wrap us up or whatever, but people are making all these complaints about, well, I don't like the way they ordain women, or I don't like the way they do this, or I don't like, okay, go read your Bible, you whiny babies, <laughs> and see what Paul says in Philippians 1, where he says, some are preaching Christ out of love and some are preaching Christ out of envy, seeking to do me harm. I don't care so long as Christ is preached. Yeah. So get over it. Yeah. And if Christ is preached, these are our brothers and sisters and we champion what they're doing and yep. what God's doing through yeah. them. Yep. Yeah, I think that's brilliant, like to say to say get over it. But also like if you're um for the for the softer people Sorry. To the, that aren't making such a hard fast stance. I'm just saying like <laughs> if you do feel attention, like question it. Like say like why why am I feeling this attention? Like look mm. at yourself. And then if it's because of these these stupid reasons, get over it. Absolutely. <laughs> but like I think if you're feeling tension, is it because of the of the news footage you see? Is it because of some uh, podcast you listen to? Are you you feeling tension because of mm. a, a voice? outside of it? Or are you feeling tension because of maybe some teaching you may have saw? Like where, where's the tension coming from? And if it's just within you, you can say, okay, well, I'm not the parameter of truth. I'm not the parameter of this type of change. Jesus is, is Jesus at work yeah, with I think, what's going on here? Take that a step farther, I think, because mm-hmm. I don't think it's just, I don't think you can just say, ask myself why I'm caught, why there's tension. I think you got to pinpoint it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask and then find the answer. Gotcha. Like, I don't think you can just say like, I feel tension over this. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. If you feel tension, you need to figure out Pursue why. Pursue that intention. Because that tension, here's yeah. why it's such a big deal in this particular case. Because if you feel tension on something that is a non-gospel issue, mm-hmm. um, then you need to figure out why there's tension there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's what I mean. I feel tension in the loss of conversation, loss of salvation conversation, because mm-hmm. I have a biblical perspective of that. Yeah. So it's here's why I'm saying that. It's fine to have tension. Mm-hmm. Just make sure you figure out why you have tension. Why is that tension the, there, yeah. so, so, so what I mean by taking it a step farther, I don't think it's wrong that people have tension. Mm. I think they got to figure out why. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. if the tension's there, you're able to pinpoint it. Yeah. Do I have tension over something that is because someone's proclaiming the wrong gospel? Or is there tension because I disagree with the perspective of like casting out demons? Yeah, if yeah. that's the case, to your point, I can't imagine Paul in Philippians 1 was like, I really like these people. Right. As people. Yeah, he didn't. He's like, I, but they're preaching Christ. I can't yeah. imagine he's not, he's saying, I don't have any tension with these people. <laughs> True. You know what I'm per, saying? Personally, yeah, he probably <laughs> we, had tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We as a culture think that tension's wrong. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think that needs to be the case. I think if you feel tension about it, figure out why, Big because point. then you need to know, like, is the tension wrapped around the gospel that's being preached or is the tension something else? And if the tension's something else, that's fine. Yeah. Have the tension over it and then you can have conversations about the tension. It doesn't, the goal's not to get rid of the tension. Hmm. The yeah, goal yeah. is to, to to rally around the gospel. Yeah, there yeah. will always be tension over disagreements in theology. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, in the to make sure that I'm on the same page as you, like, once you pinpoint and acknowledge that tension, that tension can remain, but don't allow that tension to be elevated over. Yeah, the which gospel. is what you were trying to say. You yeah, were trying yeah, to say yeah, if there's, if you feel tension over this, like you don't like it, try to figure out why that is. <laughs> yeah. So that you don't have a stance that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I just think that they're- They'll make it more clear, yeah. Yeah, what well, we're not actually saying is you have to like the people were being, the no. demons are being cast out, or you have to like the people were being, speaking in tongues. What we're saying is, if you're a believer and Christ is being preached, you have to like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, or, yeah, to, uh, the, to that point- I'll say it different. You will like that. Yeah. yeah. And to that point, there are churches that I probably wouldn't attend. If I wasn't a pastor, Absolutely. if we didn't, yeah. there, there are a, a lot. There are a, only a handful of churches that I would probably really enjoy being at. By attend, mm-hmm. you mean like go to, uh, make that your home church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not talking about go to a service. Right, right, right. Sorry. 
So like if I wasn't a pastor and I was looking for a church home, the list of churches that I would be comfortable in would be very small. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't also say, well, I know that they preach Christ and I'm, I'm for them. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I could, absolutely, I could have that. I could be like, I don't really agree with the way they do these things, but mm-hmm. I'm for them because of how, yep. how they're for Christ. Yep. Yeah. I, I really, I, sorry, I'm making this longer now. I really think this is like the spirit taking down some walls. I think, so. I, I think I we, have, so. we have lived in, I forget exactly when the denominational split started, but I remember reading about it where they would, they split denomination is like of the name right. of a the name they split because they were literally physically fighting over the theological disagreements so to yeah. stop the fighting they started meeting in groups that would agree on these things so they would stop fighting so like i don't remember when that was yeah um britain you can tell me when that was later but like <laughs> and, and since, <laughs> since since then josh will look it up britain already knows uh, <laughs> josh probably probably knows anyway i don't know josh knows a lot <laughs> Josh's yes. arms are probably bigger than Stacey's too. <laughs> um, I don't know when that was, but I feel like since then, I I don't actually have any problem with denominations in in general, in mm-hmm. terms of like people gathering together. Like if what I mean is if there's a group of people that has a perspective on tongues, sure, that's different than mine. I don't actually have a problem with those people gathering to worship together every week. Is what I mean. Sure. Um, so long as the I, emphasis is yes. Christ. What yeah. I do have a problem with is the t- is the is the wrong word, is the conflict that's been created between people that disagree on those things. So mm. like, while you could say what you just said a second ago, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with churches that proclaim Jesus as right. the Christ, as the gospel, while I might not go to that church and make it my home church because I might have some disagreements with them on like form right. of worship or practice within leadership or just a myriad of things. Um, what you're after is not the conflict with those people. And I think that's the right. wall that's being torn down. Like where, where you could have, um, even in San Angelo, we have friends that are pastors at churches that we probably disagree with on theology on. Sure. And we are friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we are under the same banner of Jesus and we are seeking to honor Jesus and to lead people well, to shepherd people well under that sure. banner. And we could have conversations about the disagreements, but it doesn't mean we're divided. That's the wall I think that's started to, starting to come down. I think that there's been a generational shift. I think our parents and our grandparents' generation, what they saw was the, um, the divisiveness that happens when people are like um, in different categories sure. of thinking. Like we, I mean, the joke growing up at the Southern Baptist Church was we got to, we got to get early enough so we can be the Methodist Salubies. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like that was a joke, but there was some seriousness yeah. behind yeah. the joke because that was literally the reality. And you would never sit with those people yeah. mm-hmm. at Lubies or Furs or wherever you went to or whatever cafeteria was your <laughs> yes. of choice. You wouldn't sit with those people because that's the Methodist and that's the Baptist and that's the Charismatics. And yeah. they, they, you know what I'm saying? Like all those people believe in the gospel yeah. as at the core. I mean, it doesn't mean every single Methodist church or every single Baptist church or Assemblies of God church. Like, I mean, I heard Annie Stanley basically preaching a false gospel mm. recently on a clip, which was mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Southern Baptist church. Yeah. I've, I, I mean, I've heard all the, denom- my dad got saved in an Assemblies of God church and now pastors of Southern Baptist church. So to your point, people need to freaking get over it. Yeah. I mm-hmm. think that's the walls that are coming down. Yeah. It's, yeah. We could talk sometime about confirmation bias and that mm. there's a little bit of a degree mm. to which uh, denominations continue to be supported and divided because of confirmation bias. Like, that's, that's interesting. We are surrounding ourselves with teachers and authors and podcasts of people yeah. who think exactly like we do on secondary issues. Mm-hmm. And that's what the division is over. And that's what the division is yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. And, and if we would start to focus on the primary issue of Christ— we would be able to enjoy a lot more of the body of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also think that's why you see the a whole lot of church plants now that are planting are non-denominational. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. I think you're seeing this shift. Yeah. yeah. And there's a kickback, maybe it's confirmation bias from the denominations. I had the head of a denomination, a state denomination, tell me one time that when we grow up as a church, we will join their denomination um, that I don't makes think, us not want to even more <laughs> yeah, no, right? my wife says I gotta get a shirt that says something like please understand what you're getting yourself into <laughs> I didn't say anything it wasn't the right time I don't even know if that's exactly what he meant yeah but either way it was uh, it was an arrogant statement yeah know? whether he meant it to be or not it was uh, it's like the people who used to ask us when are y'all gonna start a church because we were meeting on Sunday nights instead of right. Sunday mornings mm-hmm. They never asked me that. 
I think no. I, apparently I had this. Did you want to put a sticker on my back or something? That had this <laughs> Don't talk to Micah about that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I like it. I like what's going on. Yeah. Asbury. Too. Yeah, absolutely. And Asbury. Asbury. <laughs> uh, I mean, we talked about a lot of things, but would you want to say a simpler view for this? Yeah, when we get together to worship Jesus, it's awesome. It's awesome, man. I, I think make, that, make it about Jesus. Yeah, I think that's what I say. Is like we got to remember that this is about Jesus. So yeah. in the midst of our struggles or tensions, to mm-hmm. use the word that way, uh, of disagreements with people over secondary issues, mm-hmm. we have to agree that the the goal is Jesus and its mm-hmm. core. So if we agree with someone on the gospel, we both put our faith in Jesus as the means of salvation. Um, and specifically the Jesus of the Bible. I think that's what, I don't want people to ever hear that. Like Mormons and Muslims do not believe in the same Jesus we do. Yeah. Right. Um, Hindus and Buddhists don't believe in the same Jesus. Like, right. That's what I mean is I'm not talking about being one with people who don't agree. Use, with the, use the name. Here's Jesus. another thing. Yeah. I saw the enemy stuff. I saw a clip. If it's fabricated, it's freaking genius. There's a clip of like the head imam of, I don't know, Islam. I don't know. I didn't know there was one. The Pope and uh, like the head rabbi. Sounds like a joke. It's totally a joke. <laughs> They're in a bar together. I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're sitting around at a table and signing this paper that says we, we agree on this particular thing. Like we are calling ourselves one faith. Oh, oh man. I, I, I'm watching this. Like this yeah. is the work of the enemy. Because, this- because they're all monotheistic yes yeah, yeah. like and, they're they're rallying so around we're what, all monotheistic it's the uh, people who argue well we just call him by different names but we believe in the same yes. god and, the same, and we know mm-hmm. this stuff's coming like this yeah. is your eschatological viewpoint wherever you land you know that this stuff is coming. Right. like it's we're moving yeah. this direction my point is like it's happening and that's why i think this stuff's going on right now yeah. um it, it feels like things are coming to a head yeah yeah how interesting that's oh, my point isn't it I love it, man. I like to think to view it, to view it that perspective. Um, well, really, just to view it at the perspective of Christ being glorified. Like that's that's awesome yeah. enough for sure. But like to view just like what you said, to view it in light of what's happening culturally and how this is just such a punch in the face to what the what the enemy is doing is amazing. The three most famous people in religion in the world, probably mm-hmm. meeting around at the table, and God's like, "Here's a bunch of nobody. <laughs> Here's a bunch dudes. of nobodies that are." And they have, to have global reach. To I bet y'all didn't know about gospel. that mm-hmm. that thing. No, but you all you both knew about the Asbury thing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. You know who else I know about? Steven. Steven. Uh, Steven. <laughs> We're at the Garden Audio as always. Uh, go go follow Steven at the Garden Audio on Instagram. Go see what he's got going on over there. Uh, he's recently shared some stuff happening in his, in his personal life. I know his son got a dirt bike and they're jumping into the dirt bike world. And so if you're interested in seeing not only what happens in the studio, but also he now it's had ha- shoulder surgery. Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> Golly. He had, did he both, crash his dirt bike? Both his shoulders are torn. The, you know, the doctor <sighs> said, <laughs> here's the, I'm um, sorry, Stephen, I'm sharing this. The doctor told him, <laughs> he goes, I've seen this in men so much. Uh, in their 30s and 40s who were super athletic when they were young and then they get a job where they don't do anything. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, hot Cheeto. <laughs> that's, what, that's what he said. No, the doctor was serious though. Like the, he goes, I think the doctor told them as men move up in their companies and their jobs become less manual labor, it like does something with your bicep where it like pulls mm, on your shoulder or something. Up. And so it's funny because he said the doctor was like, so I tell men like, I don't think there's a design flaw in how God made us, but if I was going to change one thing, it'd be this. And I was like, wait, wait, what he means is the issue is not God's design. The issue is that people quit doing manual we'll labor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he was like, yeah, I told that to the doctor. The doctor's like, I'm not going to tell that to my patients. Yeah. yeah. That's funny. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, go, go cheer up Steven over there after Poor he's Steven. Yeah. After his doctor just laid him out. But uh, while you're on social media, we are on, we are at simpler pod. Go check us out over there. Go see what we got going on. We're sharing, we're sharing stuff from episodes. We're sharing memes. We're sharing things. That's and going if you on. don't follow us individually on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, follow us all too. Cause we're going to, yep. we're going to start doing some more simpler stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. on our individual Instagrams too. And all of that is tagged in the show notes as well. So okay. we, yeah, we've got our, we've got our individual ones posted in there as well. So go and help scroll. us out as those things pop up like share them and share them. Yeah. We're just like our heart. We've realized this recently. We've heard so many encouraging stories about, how this these conversations have been 
beneficial for people just in like, <laughs> like helping them change the way they think. Not even mm-hmm. like, honestly, it's, you know, it's funny. Most of the people I have conversations with about these episodes probably don't agree with us on everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and, but, but it's the conversations that yeah. they enjoy. Yeah. And so like, we want more people to be involved in these kind of conversations, which is why we're asking yeah. um, you guys to help us out. Like we don't have any money to like <laughs> promote this <laughs> and market it. it yeah. So <laughs> we're three nobodies. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. The, he's, don't say that. Cause then God will make us like, <laughs> Use this in some way where you're like, I don't want to be on. I have, I have as strong of a personality as I have, I have zero desire to ever be in like a, a spotlight. I, I don't want to ever be on national news. Yeah. I just don't, I don't want it. I don't. <laughs> anyways, I, I, I just want to like get my kayak out and go fishing without someone bothering me. I just want to like go play disc golf and do life. Anyways, I don't, I don't, I, I feel bad for Asbury university to some degree because now they're going to have all this notoriety. They're probably mm. going to have a bunch of, people starting to want to go to school there, which is awesome. But like it, their whole world just got turned upside down mm-hmm. and that, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying like, I don't want it, but yeah, if, yeah. help us out because we don't have any money to like promote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, want, we want this conversation to go out farther. So as we post, help us out by just liking and sharing. What yeah. We do. And that, that plays into the algorithm for sure. Is that helps broaden the audience and broaden our group to keep the conversation going. And it's awesome. Yeah. So we we're thankful for you guys watching, listening every week. We're thankful for you guys uh, liking and sharing where you can. And as always, keep Christ as core. What could be simpler than that? Catch y'all next week. Bye.